So I'm going to be sharing with you how I make these Japanese curry bread buns. So these are like really good and crisp on the outside but have a really chewy dough on the inside and they're filled with a delicious savory Japanese curry. So I'm first going to start by sharing how I make the curry. So I heated up a pan and added in some oil. I added in diced onion and I'm just going to quickly saute that until it's fragrant, aromatic and slightly translucent. So this curry is really up to you, but I'm just going to add in some bell peppers and quickly stir fry that as well. So it's going to take a few minutes for it to cook down, but afterwards you're going to go ahead and add in the carrots. And just quickly mix that up again before you add in the potatoes. So I like using this like carrot potato mix for my curries, but it's totally up to you if you want to add in other veggies or even tofu. And for the curry cubes, I did use 70 to 80 grams of Japanese curry cubes. So these really come in different types of like heat. Um, mine is around medium hot, so it's not that spicy. I added in the water and I'm just going to go quickly mix that up before I go ahead and cover it. To leave it to a boil for the potatoes and the rest of the veggies to cook. So it's going to take around maybe 10 to 15 minutes, but it's going to thicken up because the cubes do contain a bit of thickeners. So you're going to have a really, really thick and lush curry. You can add in some more water depending on your desired consistency, but I was happy with mine. So I transferred it onto a container. So I'm going to need around one and a half to two cups of curry for the buns. And I'm just going to transfer that to a container to cool. While the rest of the curry, I'm probably going to enjoy as is with some rice or with some crispy tofu katsu. I will link this recipe in the description below. And next up, we're going to just leave that to cool. Um, I did refrigerate mine overnight. So the next day, it turned really, really thick, which is perfect for the filling of the buns. So for the dough ingredients, we are going to need one tablespoon of cornstarch. And then we're gonna need one fourth cup of all purpose flour. And then we are gonna need one cup of bread flour. And we're gonna need some one half cup of warm soy milk or other non dairy milk, one tablespoon of neutral oil, one teaspoon of instant dry yeast, one teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of sugar. So we're just going to go add in the flour to the bowl. So basically, you're just going to add in all the dry ingredients first. Um, so that's cornstarch, sugar, a salt, the yeast. And then we're just going to go quickly mix that up together until it's well incorporated. And then afterwards, we are going to go form like a small hole in the middle. And then while we're mixing that, we are going to go ahead and add in the warm milk. So while mixing, just go ahead and add in the milk. You're going to want to mix everything until it's slightly well incorporated and you're starting to form your dough here. And then you can also just quickly use your hands if you're more comfortable, which I was more comfortable with. So I use my hands to kind of like mix everything together and get everything well incorporated. So just mix, use my hands here to mix. Um, make sure to scrape off the flour from the edges and just like quickly knead that well together until you slowly have a dough and after you're gonna add in the oil here and just really mix everything up together again so it is gonna be a bit messy at first um, but don't worry because once you start shaping the dough into a ball you'll notice that the dough will start to get firmer um, this is especially due to the gluten that's starting to shape well and form together so just keep kneading that and you're going to notice that eventually your hands are going to turn out clean. And once you give the dough a good stretch, you'll see that the bonds have formed there. And just keep kneading that for a few minutes and then afterwards, shape it to a ball and place it back into the bowl. And go ahead and just cover that up with a lightly damp towel and leave it to sit to rise in a warm place for at least an hour until you have a double sized dough. And once you like take a good punch into it, it won't like bounce back so you know it's ready. And then we're just gonna go and flour our surface here just so it doesn't stick. And then add in the double dough. And you're gonna wanna cut it in half. And then after you cut it in half, you can go ahead and roll it into two long logs. And then once you roll it into two long logs, you're going to want to divide each log into um, four. So you're going to have basically 
eight pieces of dough in total and I did weigh my dough so each one was around 40 to 44 grams in total um, so I do make sure that I cover my dough with a damp towel while I'm working on like each piece one by one so that they don't dry out so I flared my surface and then I rolled the dough in to a ball and just quickly pressed it on the surface before rolling it out with a dumpling rolling pin so yes I did use a dumpling rolling pin and I like it because it's much lighter than the regular rolling pin it's easier to work with for me but if you have a regular rolling pin it's totally fine also so I rolled it out until I had around a 3.5 to 4 inch wrapper so we're gonna just quickly roll that out and just flour your pin if you need to and then afterwards I had a wrapper that's not so thin on the sides as you can see and then I just make sure that I keep this under a damp towel so they don't dry out while I work with the rest of the dough then afterwards you're gonna just go ahead and get a piece of wrapper and you're gonna just like quickly pinch the side just to like thin it out a bit so you're gonna see here that I'm just like kind of creasing it in a way and just pinching it so it also gets a bit bigger and it's gonna get a bit like curly on the sides so you add around 1 to 1.5 tablespoons of curry so make sure just to keep the curry out of the sides you don't want it to get messy and you're gonna just seal this like you would a dumpling and just pinch the sides together so you're not gonna need any water for this just pinch it well because the dough is fresh so just go ahead and pinch that well because you don't want the filling to seep out after so just pinch it really really well i'm just gonna stress it out definitely pinch it really well and then afterwards i'm just gonna kind of like tuck it in a bit here just to really make sure it's properly sealed so i'm tucking it in and then after i tuck in the wrapper throughout i'm just gonna go and quickly like lightly press on it and flip it over and lightly press it so that it's really sealed tight and i just basically did this for the rest of the dough so i got eight in total I am gonna make here um, some of like vegan egg wash. Um, it's a mix of cornstarch with some room temperature soy milk or other plant milk and just mix that up. Um, you're gonna wanna mix as well because the cornstarch does tend to sit at the bottom sometimes. So just mix that until the cornstarch has diluted. And then afterwards, um, we're just gonna go ahead and prepare some breadcrumbs. So I'm using around 3 fourths cup of Japanese or panko style breadcrumbs for the coating. Afterwards, just go ahead and brush each one. So just brush one up before um, putting it in the breadcrumb mixture. So when it's in a breadcrumb mixture, you're gonna wanna coat it well and just kind of lightly press down the breadcrumbs so that they stick to the bun. And just coat that evenly on each side. And afterwards, I did repeat for the rest and look at all these coated ones. So I heated up a pot or a large pan with enough oil to submerge at least half of them. So once it's hot, um, I added in the buns. So you're gonna want the oil really, really hot so that um, they get a good crisp and also don't get oily inside. So just add in the buns and you're gonna want to leave it to cook for maybe four to five minutes on each side. But keep an eye out because my temperature was pretty high so I did kind of almost burn my buns the first time around so you can see it has a good golden brown but it was lightly almost black at the bottom but at least i didn't burn mine but they were good and really really crisp so i flipped it over and just repeat the cook on the other side and then i'm just going to leave it on for a few more minutes so that they get evenly browned also so you see that on and kind of like move it around a bit if you'd like and just flipped it over again just to check just to be sure so once they're golden brown throughout you can go ahead and take it out or just move it around a bit and use a strainer here so we want to drain out the excess oil and just took it out of the oil so I went ahead and cooked the rest so this is the part where it gets kind of tricky so as you noticed here the bun um, wasn't sealed that well or it kind of like ruptured while it was expanding as it cooked so as you can see um, there's started to open up here and we cannot leave it on to cook any longer because 
they will seep out of the bun and it'll get messy so what I did was I took it out of the oil and I transferred it on a baking tray and I'm just gonna go and bake it for the rest of the cooking time so we can just really also bake these but I did cook the rest um, in oil because they held up really well so yeah these are how they look like um, the golden brown and crisp outside and really really good and satisfying so I'm just gonna go and slice one up here for you guys to see how it looks like inside so it's also super crispy so you guys probably hear the audio is like really crisp and these are how they look like inside so the dough is like really chewy and just to give you a more realistic view of how they look like and also for the baked version, these are how they turned out. So these are the ones that opened up and I baked them at 350 for around 25 more minutes. And they turned really good and crisp, just not as evenly brown. So this is the finished product and full disclaimer, I did add a scoop in of more curry so they look really full for photo purposes. But yeah, for a more realistic expectation, this is how they're gonna look like. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and thank you so much for watching. Um, see you guys in my next video.